Hello everyone. Welcome to 901 Woodworking. I'm Hubert Mace and this is part three of our three-part series on how to make a wine barrel Adirondack chair. In parts one and two, we got ourselves up to the point of sanding and finishing, which is what we'll do over the next two days, followed then by the final assembly, at which point the chair will be complete. So let's go over to the workbench and get started. To start the finishing process, I sand every part, all sides and all edges with 150 grit. Because this is outdoor furniture, I find that just sanding with 150 grit is more than enough, especially after adding two coats of polyurethane finish over top of it, it makes for a nice surface for an outdoor chair. Remember to sand all of the edges and round over the corners as well. These staves have quite sharp corners and that can lead to a very uncomfortable seat. It can also lead to splinters. So sanding the edges nicely prevents that. Once the sanding is finished on all of the parts, clean up all the parts, vacuum all the dust off of them, and start the finishing process. I use a high quality exterior grade polyurethane with UV blockers in it to help prevent the sun and weather from affecting the wood too quickly. None of these finishes will last forever and after a few years you will have to re-sand and reapply the finish but hopefully just the uh, exposed surfaces will need to get done and it can be done without disassembling the chair. There are many different polyurethane finishes on the market that are available for something like this. I can't say that I'm using the best one out there. It's one I like, I've had good success with it, but many different finishes would probably work as well, especially marine grade finishes that are meant to uh, resist a saltwater environment they might be just as tough and may work just as well. After I've applied the first coat, I'll let that dry for a couple hours. The drying time depends on the weather and the humidity, so it's just something you'll have to play by ear. Uh, feel the, the surface, it should still be a little tacky, it should not be completely dry, but once it gets to that stage, I'll apply a second coat and let that dry fully overnight. Then after the finish has dried overnight, I'll turn the parts over and repeat the process on the other side so that every surface of each part is covered by at least two coats of polyurethane. The finishing is complete. We've got two coats of polyurethane on all sides of each piece. Let them dry overnight and now we're ready for the final assembly. At this point, take a look at the pieces, make sure they're all in good condition, that there aren't any runs, obvious flaws in the finish. This is the time to take care of those now before you do the final assembly. I've checked all of these. These all look good to me and now we're ready to put it all together. So here we go.
This is where careful numbering of the brackets becomes so important. Now you know which bracket goes where and you can put them right back where they were. is loosely assembled and go ahead and tighten all of the nuts except I leave the nuts for the seat back brackets loose just in case I need to move them slightly when the seat back goes in. The frame all tightened, put it aside and we'll put it back together next. That's all the holes filled that we had drilled before. Now we'll drill the rest of the holes and finish putting all the other screws in. That's the back done. Now we can bring the frame back up and put them together. basic frame and back put back together. Next thing we need to do is put the seat slats on. In order to put the seat slats on, it's easiest to turn the chair upside down and to remove the two support braces. Take the first slat and place it up against the seat back, making sure that it's centered between the legs. Then using some spring clamps, hold it in place.
the same for the frontmost seat slot. For the other four slots, install them with clamps all at once and then set the spacing so they're all evenly spaced. The spacing is done visually. There's no science to it at this point. You could measure, I suppose, but I find the visual works quite well. Once you're happy that the slats are all in place, pre-drill and assemble the screws in just like you did with yours. screws in place, remove the clamps, and put the braces back on. One last check of all of the nuts, making sure everything is tight. tightened the chair is now complete thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this three-part series on how to build a wine barrel adirondack chair join us next time as we do another wine barrel furniture project see you then